If you're shooting video of any kind and you want to add some panning and tilting to your shots, you're going to need some type of fluid head. Because if you use the Walmart special, you're going to be in serious trouble. And if you have multiple tripods and monopods, you may want to buy the same head for all of them. So switching a camera from one to another is seamless. I'm going to give you the rundown on four different heads. And at the end of the video, I'll let you know which one I currently use and why. Now let's start with the iFootage Komodo K5. The price is actually pretty good at the time of recording. It's 150. Now there are links below if you want to check the current pricing. Go ahead and click on those. And the nice thing about this iFootage is the build quality is really good. The other thing that I also like about it is that it has a sliding plate. Oh, shit. And not just a sliding plate, but a sliding plate with a safety catch on it that just saved my you know what. So you can use that to adjust the balancing of your camera you know, depending if it's a, maybe a camcorder or it's a mirrorless camera with a shorter lens or a longer lens, you can sit there and kind of dial in the balance of it. And then also there's kind of a spring uh, return mechanism built into the fluid head. So when you're tilting, it kind of wants to return back to center for you, which can help or kind of hurt depending on who you are and what you like. But I found it to be very helpful provided that the camera you're, you're using with it is not too heavy. I found that the panning and the tilting were pretty good on this particular model. So this is rated to go up to about 11 pounds and um, using a heavier camera, I threw a C100 on there. I also threw my JVC LS300 on there. And I felt with both of those cameras, because they're a little bit heavier, it didn't feel like this was the best fluid head for those. It did work, but I didn't love it. Um, I definitely felt it worked very well with my Sony A6400 and also using my Panasonic FC2500. Both of these cameras are lighter than, uh, say, a C100, probably by two or three pounds. And that definitely made a difference in the panning and the tilting. And I thought the iFootage did very well. And I want to take a quick break to show you what's coming up in the next video, the Yangnuo YN300 3 lights, which I've been using now for about two years. And I want to show you some of the features and benefits of these lights. So please make sure you subscribe. Next up is the Manfrotto 502A as in Apple, H as in Harry. Now this one is $159, only $10 more than the last. And the panning on this is very good and you can adjust the drag on it. And the tilt is very good as well.
Also, this can support up to 15 pounds of weight, which I do believe is true. It is very heavy duty, it's very well made, all metal construction. And the Manfrotto comes with a plate that slides back and forth so you can balance your camera by moving forward or backwards depending on your lens and the battery on it. You can, you can adjust for the weight so that it's more balanced and it's not tilting forward or tilting backward on you. And similar to the iFootage, the Manfrotto also has a return mechanism built inside of it. Now, the only problem with it is that it is so well made that it is very heavy. It's going to make putting this on a monopod not impossible, but makes it harder to use because it makes your setup that much heavier. One other thing that I don't love about the Manfrotto is where the pan lock is situated. It's situated in the front of the head and it's kind of hard to reach around and adjust. Next on the list is the Magnus VPH 20. The best thing about this one is definitely the price. The price is only $49.99, so it's $50 for this thing. And believe it or not, you can actually adjust the, the drag on this one for the pan and the tilt, which is quite amazing for this price. You know, with the lighter camera, you can achieve smooth pans and tilts with this. I've definitely done it. It's not the best, but pretty decent for the price. It's very small and it's very lightweight, so packing this is very easy. But, of course, being that it is so lightweight, the build quality of it is not the greatest. This plate just kind of snaps in. You cannot adjust it back and forth like you can the Manfrotto. So there's a slight disadvantage with this one when you compare it to that one. You could even adjust the plate on the Komodo. The first one that I mentioned, you cannot do it with this one. You can buy an adapter plate like the one you see here, and links will be below if you want to check it out. But that will allow you to adjust your camera. So it's another accessory you need to buy to put on top of the existing plate. I've been using it for years now, and it definitely works uh, even with a heavy setup. I have no problems. Now one other benefit of the Magnus head, you don't need tools to attach it to your camera. You simply just use your fingers to tighten it into the camera. With the other head, you're gonna need some type of tool, whether it's a coin, a screwdriver, or something to help you attach it to your camera. Another problem that I've had with the VPH 20, it seems like the quality control on it is not very good. I've had multiple heads and the plates all fit differently. So I have a Magnus VT350 tripod, which uses a similar style head to the VPH20. It's not removable, but it's still the same type of design, yet the plate is slightly bigger than the VPH20. So it can fit in there, no problem, but if you take the plate out of the VPH20 and put it on my VT350, there's wiggle and that just messes you up because now your shots when you pan and tilt may have a little wiggle to them and that's just unacceptable. Are there ways around that? Sure, I mean, you can put a little tape on it or something just to give it kind of a buffer when you put it in and it'll make it tighter. 
there's there's ways around it, but it's kind of unfortunate that it just doesn't fit the same on every single head. Last on the list is the David and Sanford FM18. Now, this particular head kind of ranges in prices depending on where you get it from. It could be anywhere from like $105 to $120. But still, it's still a good price for what you're getting. The build quality of it is very good. It's all metal, it's solid. Also with the Davis head, you can slide back and forth just like you can on the Manfrotto and the eye footage. Even though you cannot adjust the drag, the drag is already very good. There is a lot of resistance in the panning and the tilting. It does support up to 18 pounds as well. It also comes with two handles. So if you're trying to move around a heavier camera, you can put both handles on and have more control. It's not as wide as the Manfrotto, but it's still very tall. So packing it can be a little difficult if you're packing multiples and not just one. It's a heavier fluid head. So if you're putting this on top of a monopod, it may be a little difficult to use because it is so heavy. And I mean, honestly, who knows? It may not be heavy to you. That might not be a big deal. Maybe I just need to hit the gym. That's always a possibility, but we won't get into that. Now let's just kind of arrange these fluid heads going from best to worst. I honestly think the best one is the Manfrotto. For the price, I'm so surprised at the quality and the functionality that you get out of this particular fluid head. I would say second would be the eye footage. Even though it's small and it may not support as much weight, it really does have a very nice smooth pan and tilt even though the Manfrotto is only just a little bit more. But like I said before, if the Manfrotto is too big for you, then I guess the eye footage would be the next, the next best thing, you know, provided the price is not too much for you. After that, I would say the Davis and Sanford will come in a very close third. Uh, the pan and the tilt on that is actually very good as well. I find that the panning is a little bit looser than the tilt, but that could be because mine is old. I've had it for many years now, so it might, have just, it, it might just be worn out. And of course, last on the list would be the Magnus VPH-20. You know, it is the, the least expensive. It is most definitely better than a head that does not have fluid in it, but it's certainly not the best. I currently own two VPH-20 heads and I still own the VT-350 tripod. So that's what I went with. And yes, it is the cheapest option, but I didn't only buy it because it was cheap. I bought it because it was light and compact. It easily packs into my bags and still gives me an adequate amount of smooth panning and tilting. So currently I own the Davis and Sanford head as well. And I typically use that when I'm doing shoots that only require a tripod. However, after doing this review and playing with the Manfrotto, I have fallen in love with it. And I do believe that's pretty much going to replace the Davis and Sanford at this point. And that is going to be the one that I use when I just have to do a shoot that requires a tripod. If you found this video helpful, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already done so to find out what other equipment you can buy to produce beautiful videos. I'm Mike Turner. Thanks for watching and I guess I'll see you soon. Music in this video today is provided by Soundstripe. To check them out, go ahead and click on the links below. And if you would like to donate to the channel, it will now hurt my feelings. Links below.